Good Monday morning, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend and a great Easter for those who celebrate. It was certainly different this year since a lot of people who go to eat out or have people over had to change their plans a little bit. Hopefully you had a good time visiting people virtually this year. One thing we know about holidays and special occasions is that people like to travel, but it's not always easy for everyone. Today, our guest is our own Melissa Southall. Melissa is the self-advocate coordinator for People First, but she also was awarded a fellowship with SARTAC, the Self-Advocacy Resource and Technical Assistance Center. Today, Melissa will talk about our project, but first, we like to remind you about the resources we have available. That's correct, Liz. Along with this weekday program that we post at 10 o'clock each morning, we invite you to go to our website, www.peoplefirstwv.org. On the front page, we have a list of links that are continually updated as new information becomes available. This is fluid, as we have seen, and so what's accurate one day might change the next, so keep going back and checking that. And then when there's a big announcement or a news release, we put those at the top right when, as soon as we get them. Yes, and first there are links to direct information about COVID-19, like what it is, reminding you to wash your hands, and other information written for people with disabilities and by people with disabilities. We also have listed a Zoom online get-together that is hosted on Mondays and Thursdays by SARTAC, the Self-Advocacy Resource and Technical Assistance. There are also federal government resources for Social Security. I know there's a lot of questions about that, and we always put their news releases on there, so you're reading it directly what they say about uh, the Social Security payments and if the stimulus uh, payments are going to affect your income guidelines for savings and things like that. IRS, Centers for Disease Control, state resources for Governor Jim Justice and his daily briefings, Workforce West Virginia if you've recently be, uh, been unemployed due to the virus, and the order to close non-essential businesses, uh, West Virginia State Health Department, Department of Health and Human Resources, Department of Education about the schools, Secretary of State for voting, and the Attorney General, if you have any questions about fraud, people calling you, telling you they'll help you get your stimulus payment, or, or telling you that they're a bill collector when they're, they're not, things like that, uh, or other things like price gouging, you can get that information on the Attorney General's website, and that link's there as well. And we are also concerned about you and your personal health and safety beyond just keeping your hands clean and not touching your face. As this goes on day after day, it can wear you down. If you don't do things to rest or relax or play a game, go outside, or other things to take your mind off what is going on. So on the website are links for agencies like WV211 from the United Way, Help for West Virginia, and other agencies that you can call in your area if you have any mental health concerns. And also, as we do these interviews day by day, we're separating them out. So if you want to hear one about banking safety, uh, banking online, or mindfulness that we did with Pam Sander a while ago, uh, there's yoga, there's music. Those are all linked as well. So then you can just pick and choose. So if you want mindfulness, you can listen to that every day without listening to the whole program that it was attached to. But now it's time for our interview today. I am excited that and I have, as a guest this morning, Melissa Southall. Melissa is the self-advocate coordinator for People First of West Virginia. Melissa did a year-long fellowship with SARTAC on the problem of transportation in rural West Virginia. And Melissa's going to take some time to talk to us about that. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning, Liz. Morning, uh, Melissa. Good morning, Doug. First of all, how did you decide to do that? SARTAC is the Self-Advocacy Resource and Technical Assistance Center. How did you get one of the fellowships so that you could start the project? Because it's something that other self-advocates could do around the state or other places that they do. So just first... Briefly, how did you get involved, and then how did you come up with transportation as your project? I got involved by watching the SARTAC page on Facebook, and also by talking with Max Burroughs, who was also a part of SARTAC, and I thought what a great opportunity that would be 
for me as the self-advocate coordinator for People First of West Virginia, as the self-advocate coordinator from a lot of the self-advocates, I heard the problems that they were having with transportation, and I thought, what a great way to help my fellow self-advocates. Very good. So can you tell us how it began? So I know you put in an application. When you put in the application, you also had to have a host organization. Tell us how you were able to work with your host organization to get things running in the great way that you were able to get them going. So my host organization is Community Resources. And so with the help of Community Resources Outreach Coordinator, Amy Fleek, we work together to to fill out questionnaires, and we built a website for my transportation project, and also we done um, one call a month on Zoom with SARTAC and fellow fellowship individuals to talk about our projects and how we were doing and how we were going about doing them. So what was the goal of your fellowship then? When you said you want to talk about transportation, what is the end product? When it's all finished and you make a presentation, what will people see from all of the work that you did? Well, they will see that we have gathered together different nonprofit organizations to work together to, we've built a pilot program that we will be starting in Wood County and hoping to expand that throughout the state. And eventually, I would like to see the transportation that's already available in West Virginia to be able to connect together around the state. And I will also have a resource guide online for people to look up, and they will be able to find that on my web page that Amy and I have created. Very good. And can you tell me a little bit about when and how you want to are going to share that? I know you said it's going to be on your website and you're going to have a resource, but how are you working to get that information to people? In October of 2020, which will be coming up soon, I will be going to Colorado to make a presentation to SARTAC at their conference, and also I would like to pre- present the information at our annual People First conference in September. Very good. And just to follow up, why is it important to you to be able to share that information at the People First conference? To me, that is where my idea of the transportation project come about was my fellow self-advocates coming to me and asking me if we could work on transportation for individuals with disabilities. So as a self-advocate coordinator, that is very important to me to help my fellow self-advocates achieve their goals. I put a survey together to get all the information from different people around the state on transportation Liz and I worked together to put the survey together, and it was distributed online for people to fill out online and submit it. And also different agencies took it and had their people fill the survey out. I took it to our annual People First conference, and I had a special class on transportation and presented what I was doing and had people fill out the surveys there, and I was able to answer any questions that people might have about transportation. We also put it out on Facebook on our People First page so that people could fill it out. We distributed it around the state. Also, when we had our booth and table set up, we put it out there so people could fill it out. And there was fairs and things that people took it to for me to have um, people fill out the, the survey. Very good. And I know Doug has helped or talked to you as you've gone through this pro- process and seen some of the results. 
I wonder, Doug, if you would be interested in sharing some of the comments that people put on the survey indicating why transportation or lack of transportation is a concern for them. And Melissa, then you can talk about maybe how you would like to address that even further. Yes, I do have that here, and we won't go through every question and all the information, but there were over 160 people that responded all over West Virginia, about 67% people with a disability, which is good to hear from the self-advocates. Over 62% were self-advocates, about 15% were family members, so that was a good response. About 54% were female and 44% were male, and I realize if you're not looking at these statistics, numbers don't translate well audio-wise, but I just want to give you kind of an age range, and the spectrum of people that filled it out were people anywhere from ages 16 through 75 plus, and people throughout all those age categories filled it out. So you got a nice cross-section all across West Virginia, as well as all the different age ranges for this information. And among the questions were, if, pe- if public transportation is available in your community, are you able to use it? And uh, we had about 53% said yes, and about 37% said no. So that's still a pretty big margin now, 37% of the people, even if it is available, that, that can't use it. And so uh, they also strongly agreed, uh, about 36%, that a lack of transportation in the community was a barrier. And then there were lots of text responses, uh, you know, if there were comments people could make. One of the ones that stood out to me was someone in the southwestern part of West Virginia that said, Southwest West Virginia is a ghost town. Many counties have few red lights, much less public transportation. People get sicker because transportation is just not available. And with the specialists in Huntington or Charleston, which is several hours away, we just don't have health care in effect. You know, a lot of people are thinking getting to the store and things, that's a huge factor when it comes to public transportation. Many adults need transportation in their daily lives just to get around. People said that they they felt more resources should be available to people. They don't have access. Things in the eastern panhandle, and so many people were very concerned about it. Some thought it would wish it was available more often. And one of the big things that, that happened was there used to be a bus that ran daily from Charleston to Huntington, and someone asked that that be restored. I know that's one of the issues that we run into when people want to come to our People First conferences and things like that, that it's very difficult to get people to different places, whether it's our conference or Charleston or any place, because even in a big city like Huntington, you can get around the city, but you can't get from there any place else. Are there any other answers? I don't want to go through all these, Melissa, but did anything that you can remember stand out in terms of comments that people made or at the People First conference about the lack of transportation in West Virginia? I just wanted to comment on what you had just said. As I have voiced many times in the office, One of my biggest concerns with transportation is the people that we serve, finding transportation to get them to our conferences, to our meetings. To me, that has been a big concern. On a basic level, just being able to get to doctor's appointments, shopping, to see their family members, to be able to go to the cemetery, to visit the graves of people they lost. Just so many things that many of us take for granted, people that don't have access to transportation are unable to do. And that leads me into one of the other questions that was asked, how does reduced or no public transportation affect your daily activities, work, shopping, socialization? And uh, right off, the very first person answer said, uh, have to depend on friends and family to get to stores, Medical appointments, daily activities, work. If you don't have friends or family, it's hard to do that. Uh, Must have private transportation to get anywhere. Couldn't get food or clothes or go to church. Can't work or go anywhere until someone can take me. Medical appointments. And so that, you're exactly right, Liz. Lots of people have a lot of difficulty. I mean, yes, that's certainly something we like people to come to our meetings and advocate in Charleston, but there's lots of people that even if there is transportation and if they don't live on the bus route, they uh, can't get places. Getting to a- I might add in, Doug, that 
I know that just off the top of my head from some of the surveys, I know that some of the self-advocates that need help getting around with maybe a wheelchair, a walker, that unless a bus or a van comes straight to their home, they're unable to get out. One person wrote, I'm not able to keep regular employment and I'm not able to visit one or my only friend who lives 12 miles away, can't go shopping by myself or for myself, and have difficulty keeping doctor's appointments because of a lack of transportation. So yes, again, that's something that we, we just take for granted. There's people who can't even get to work because they have to wait for someone to take them, or only means of transportation is by staff. So some of the folks we serve have staff who can then take them places. But if you don't have staff and you're trying to live independently and living your own home, and that's changing. In fact, some of the counties uh, that you t- uh, talked about, Melissa, don't have any public transportation at all. Isn't that correct? That's correct. I know right off the top of my head, I know that Work County has no public transportation. Wetzel County does not have public transportation. And there's more. I just can't think of them right off the top of my head. But to bring it back around to a positive thing, though, you are working on that, and you said there's a pilot program. So if you could describe that pilot program a little bit to show that there is work being done and what you're doing is going to help change what's going on and make a positive impact. So what will your pilot project involve uh, that we hope to then see duplicated other places? So we have put together a pilot program between SW Resources, the Senior Citizens Association, Community Resources, who has FaithLink, which is volunteers, and also will be working with the ARC to help do the pilot program. And we're looking to get a manager, a transportation manager that would take the calls for someone who needed transportation. So that's where we're at with the pilot program to start that out in Wood County. And hopefully that we can expand it throughout the state. I know that you have done a great job with the transportation fellowship. And kudos to you and Amy at Community Resources and Kelly at Wood County Senior Citizens and all the folks at SW Resources and everybody that's helped you to make this such a success. So my question for you is, if you were able to have another SARTAC fellowship on any topic you'd like, what would it be? I would love to be able to do a fellowship on DSPs Uh and how they are overworked and underpaid. And just so people will know what work they put into. And there's a lot of DSPs that I'm actually friends with that actually put their whole heart into it and actually care about the people that they are supporting. So, Melissa, the last question Doug and I have for you, and we've been asking everybody this, what do you do to de-stress? So, for instance, as I've said before, I like to turn up classic rock music really loud and clean my house. So we know (laughs) things are a little stressful right now. What's something that you like to do to keep yourself from being stressed? So I have a couple answers for that. The first thing is hanging out with my son and my fur babies who are here with me right now. Also, I enjoy 80s music, and I enjoy reading Amish fiction. Very nice. All right, we have been talking to Melissa Southall. She is a self-advocate coordinator here for People First of West Virginia. And as uh, something outside of People First, She received a fellowship from SARTAC and studied transportation because that's one of the things that we hear a lot about, a lack of transportation, not just in this area, but all over West Virginia. So thank you very much for taking time to join us today, Melissa. And if you have any questions, we'd love for more people to join People First. So if you have questions, you can always email 
or message through the People First Facebook page where you're watching this right now and listening to this, and she can certainly provide more information and interact, and we can grow People First as uh, as part of this. So thank you very much, Melissa, uh, for joining us today. Thank and you, Doug and Liz. Thank you. That was a lot of great information, and we hope if you have an idea for other people we can talk to and provide helpful information, you'll let us know. And a reminder, we want to see what's going on in your part of West Virginia. It's your house, your neighborhood, so send us pictures of what you're doing. Are you making crafts? Are you painting? Do you make jewelry? Are you a great photographer? Show us pictures. Tell, you know, Take a picture out your front door. You know, do, you, do you live in a place where it looks like a great picture with mountains or a stream or something? Or you live on a farm? we just like to see what's going on and share that with everybody else in the States. Since we can't be together in person, we like to be together virtually and just kind of of share. Looking ahead to Tuesday, we want to invite you to join us for an interview with the wonderful Lindsay Fry from the Payton City People First Group. She's the secretary for People First of West Virginia, but she's also a great photographer. I can't wait to see some of her photos. And we're going to talk to her about her photographs and show several of them during the interview. That's all tomorrow. Talk to you then.